everybody, welcome to the Elevate Talk Show. I am your host, Deanna Johnson Coffin. And I'm Adriana Coffin, your co host. And we're the mother daughter talk show that's here to elevate your family. If you haven't done so already, please take a second to like this video and to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. That's right, and what we have planned today. Yes, we got a great show planned for you in our Around the Town segment. We're taking you to Providence Canyon State Park in Lumpkin, Georgia. In this week's conversation segment, my mom is going to sit down with Diane Hiltman, the director of NAMI, to talk to you about navigating the mental health care system. And in our new fashion hack segment, I'm going to be showing you creative ways you can get multiple uses out of the clothes that you already own. That's right, that's right. And in this week's Meal of the Week segment, Adriana uh, is going to be showing you how to make a wonderfully easy sausage stir fry with buttery garlic herb butter biscuits. So absolutely delicious. You don't want to miss that. I also want to mention the fact that um, we have added some new exciting elements to the show. One in particular uh, would be our live streams. So please stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the show so that you don't miss our live streams. We'll be going uh, to various different places and spaces and just kind of doing some fun, um, somewhat impromptu things. So you want to stay tuned for our live streams. Now, we need to take a little break. Don't go away though. We've got a lot planned for you and we will be right back. been designated as Mental Health Awareness Month and I want to just be sure that I mention this when we speak about mental health awareness we're not just speaking about people who may have been um, diagnosed specifically with um, one illness or another bipolar or um, you know um, you know um, yeah, like schizophrenia. schizophrenia we are talking about mental health as it relates to all of us because we all have mental health to maintain. We are all just coming out of a pandemic. I've talked to a lot of people. I know people were very stressed and anxious um, uh, because of all of that. Uh, and so we're all um, having to figure this out. And so this is a good time to, um, to talk about this issue, to talk about mental health. Now, um, having said that, we have with us today in our conversation segment um, someone that I've come to know. Uh, her name is Diane Hiltman. Diane Hiltman uh, has lived in the Atlanta area for 40 years. Uh, she's a nurse. She's been a nurse. She's been a nurse midwife. She's a nurse educator. Uh, she's taught drug and alcohol programming for a decade in Atlanta. And she finally retired in two, uh, 2014. Um, Diane became deeply interested in mental health issues when close family members um, were diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Currently she serves as the president of NAMI which stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness um, and she's the DeKalb NAMI uh, president and she's the chair of Region 3 Advisory Council for the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. So uh, please turn your attention to our interview, my interview with Diane Hiltman. Well, welcome to the show again, Diane. Uh, we had you here several months ago uh, to talk about um, NAMI, the National Alliance, uh, I think it's of mental illness. Is it of mental illness a lot? It's of, at, for, <laughs> that, that preposition well, changes. NAMI, from NAMI, NAMI person. Alliance uh, for Mental Illness. And so we talked a lot several months ago about what NAMI does and how they help. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so I wanted to dedicate several shows to the subject of mental health. And today's interview with you is really going to concentrate on some, some more specific resources for people uh, who are suffering from mental health issues, but also their families um, to really tap into, because I think people need to know what's out there. And I don't think they know that um, mm -hmm. enough. So we're gonna we're gonna delve into that. First of all, can you recap a little bit for us for those people who weren't privy to our former interview, our previous interview? Can you tell my audience a little bit about your background and about um, 
what you do professionally and your family's journey with mental illness. Can you just recap on that a little bit? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I have been a nurse and a nurse midwife. I delivered babies at Grady until I found my Prince Charming very late in life and <laughs> began having our, our own babies. And yeah. then I retired to stay home with them full time. They are now yeah. 35 and 32. Wow. And, uh, and when they got a little older, I became a drug and alcohol educator. So I, I know a fair amount about how to prevent drug and alcohol abuse. Right. Um, as my sons um, discovered that they live with bipolar disorder, both of them, uh, and as I retired, I became an active NAMI volunteer. So I've been uh, on the NAMI board. I just finished six years of that, one year as president, and I have uh, been real, real active in NAMI as a teacher and support group participant. I teach a class that NAMI offers uh, at no cost. All NAMI services are no cost, by the wow. way. Wow. And uh, this class is specifically for family members. It's called Family to Family. Yes. And uh, it offers a basic foundational understanding about mental illness, what's going on in the brain when someone has a mental illness to, to the extent that we understand it now. Sure. Sure. And um, uh, so that's what I'm devoting myself to now. Yes, yes. Wow, wow, wow. And now, um, and can you tell us just a little bit about, uh, well, you, you shared about the fact that your sons both have bipolar. Um, yes. Before. And one of the things we teach in NAMI is that to the extent that we understand it now, mm. all mental illnesses have two components. Yes. One is the component of some sort of genetic history. Somebody wow. somewhere yes. had a mental illness and the genes have been passed down. That's right. In our case, we don't know of any family history on either side of bipolar disorder. We, right. we have no knowledge of it, but right. clearly somebody had it somewhere. Right. That's right. Right. And then the second component is, and we're going to call it, yeah, we don't know yet what it yes. is, <laughs> okay? Uh, it, there's a lot of theories about yes. what the second hit is. Yes. And that's yes. how it's referred to. Yes. Uh, it could be the intrauterine environment. It oh, could wow. be viruses. It could be uh, yeah. viruses that the, the fetus or the, yeah. the, the infant encounters after birth. It wow. could be uh, in, incredible stress. We, really? We're hearing about um, adverse childhood events wow. called ACEs now. Yeah. And we know that people who've been exposed to very stressful environments young in their life yes. have a greater likelihood wow. of having adult uh, mental illness issues. Wow. There, there are uh, the gut biome, the, yes. the, the yes. bacteria that live yes. in the gut can affect yes. our mental health. Wow. So there's lots of theories. Wow. There's not a lot of clarity yet. Wow. There will be one day. Sure. Right sure. now, we, we know it's two things, mm -hmm. genetics and something else. Right. And we know it's nobody's fault. Right. I think and we talk know about that. it's... Yeah. It, we know it's uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. The yes. shame and silence often ah. accompany this yes. particular yes. physical illness. And that's, yes. again, how we refer to it in NAMI. Mental yes. illness is yes. a physical illness yes. of the brain. I wanted to talk about um, some other kinds of resources uh, for people to tap into. Um, people that, for people that live in Metro Atlanta and Georgia, but also some of these resources are available. I want to make sure people understand that in other states, it's just a matter of tapping into that uh, in your state. So I want to make that clear. Certainly, I'd would like to really uh, encourage people <clears throat> to be aware of this summer's uh, rolling out of the new 988 number also. Oh, that's really? going to be uh, national uh, uh, mm -hmm. as a way to, instead of calling 911 uh, yeah. as the first option, it'll yeah. be the, the shorthand number for yeah. mental health, suicide, substance abuse crisis services, wow. 988. Wow. I, I, uh, the, uh, 
the rollout is going to occur this summer. Right. Give it time. Uh, People have reminded me that 911 took a couple of years to get all the bumps smoothed out of it. Uh, What we want to do is start to separate the criminalization of mental health (laughs) issues from the public safety sector so that we can get the services instead of putting people in jail necessarily. I love that. I love that. That's that's great. That's a big, big um, um, uh, uh, achievement to have come. Yes, it is. That's a big achievement. And so that's 988. And that's going to roll out this summer. Yes. And I encourage family members to Mm -hmm. find an organization, Mm -hmm. get some education, Mm -hmm. learn how you can best support your loved one, both with the knowledge that you need about mental health. Yes. And with the communication techniques that you will need in order to support your loved one. I love it. I absolutely love it. It does make a difference. I know just in in learning speak with dignity and definitely. respect, definitely. But we also have to be able to set firm, boundaries. clear yes. boundaries. Absolutely. And it's a fine line. It's a fine um, line and we won't ever get it perfect all yeah. the time. Um, but we, so yeah, we but have it's, to have a lot of forgiveness yeah. for ourselves and yes. others. Yes, yes. But yes. but our ability to support our loved one after yes. they leave a yes. crisis situation yes. is what will move them along yes. to uh, long-term stability. Yes. And then we can even call it recovery. Oh, wow. Not, not cure. I understand. This is a chronic illness right. that will never go away. Right, right. But it can be treated and you can accomplish stability and recovery. Yes. And recovery means, uh, there's a lot of ways to define it. One of my favorite definitions lately that I've come across is the three P's. Yes. Purpose. Yes. Place. Yes. People. Oh, wow. You've got people in your life yes. that you love and that love you. Yes. You've got a place to live that's yes. safe and that yes. you enjoy. Yes. And you have a purpose. Yes. yes. Now, it may not be the same purpose that yeah. you had for your life before, before the, illness. the illness. Yes. I love that. But yeah. you can still have a purpose yes. that's meaningful and yes. that contributes to the world the th- i love that piece. the three purpose, the three piece place, purpose people place, and and a place, place. wow uh-huh. i so love look that. for that and yes. speak speak of that to your loved one i love help, that help me help you yes. accomplish the life you want wow what a message of hope and that's a wonderful place to stop and land on thank you so much for taking thank time you out of your schedule inviting you me. You are a breath of fresh air and continue to do what you do. We need you and more people like you. Thank you so much, Deanna. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back soon. Welcome back to the Elevate Talk Show. And in this week's fashion hacks and tips segment, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, creative ways that you can use to get multiple uses out of clothes that you already own. Wow, wow. Can you give me a little bit of uh, a, a plug about what that means? Well, there's lots. Of, you can A lot of times you can use clothing items in multiple ways. For mm-hmm. example, you can use a dress as a top. Yes. Um, you can even turn a mm-hmm. long skirt into a dress. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's all kinds of things that you can do to, you know, yeah. adjust your clothes. And actually, I, you mentioning that made me think of something that I did that you suggested I did. I had a really high-end swimsuit that I bought a couple of years ago for the beach, but um, I was looking for a top one day, and you suggested, you said, why don't you just wear your swimsuit? It's a, it's a one piece. Yeah, you can uh, use it as a bodysuit. Right, mo- use it as a bodysuit. It was just a matter of re-slotting that in my brain, so you're right. So please turn your attention to Adriana's fashion hacks for this week. Hello and welcome to our fashion hacks and tips segment. Today I'm going to be showing you some ways you can get multiple uses out of clothes that you already own. So let's get started. 
So one thing that you can do to get extra use out of clothes that you already have is to take a short form-fitting dress like this and put a skirt over it to wear it as a top. So as you can see here, I've paired this uh, dress that I'm now using as a top with a shorter skirt for a more casual look, but you can also pair it with a long uh, maxi skirt for a more formal look. All right, next I'm gonna show you my second fashion hack, which is to turn a sheer skirt with a lining into a dress. All right, so for this fashion hack, you're going to need two skirts. So I have on a sheer skirt with a lining, and then underneath I have on another black skirt. Now if you wanna do two contrasting colors instead of matching, that's fine too. So here's what you need to do. So you're gonna pull the lining of the top skirt through. And then you're gonna take that and tie it into a top. And make sure that you tuck the tag into the waistband so that that's not visible. You're gonna tie this into a halter top. And if you want to, you can use like a nice sparkly pin or brooch to uh, connect the two um, sides together. But tying works fine too. So what it does is you've turned the lining of the top skirt into a halter top. And then the skirt that you had on underneath becomes the new lining and you have this nice sheer um, overlay. So this is how you can make yourself a nice new dress out of a maxi skirt. All right, so our final fashion hack for today is going to be shortening a skirt without cutting or sewing. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so right now I have on a maxi skirt and I'm going to shorten it into more of a midi skirt. So you're just gonna need your skirt that you wanna shorten and then you're gonna need a top to put on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this skirt and I am just gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull it up to my rib cage. Um, you can even pull it up a little past that. And now it's more of a midi length. I want it a little shorter, so I'm just gonna fold this over. So now, instead of touching being close to the floor, it's you know maybe a few inches below the knee. So now, what I, now that I've gotten my skirt to its desired length, I'm just gonna put a shirt over it. Okay, this shirt's a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna do a bit of a trick with a hair tie to tighten it up. But see, now I've turned my maxi skirt, which is close to the floor, into a more wearable midi skirt, which is a little bit more practical for everyday use. And um, you can also use this trick to turn a midi skirt into a mini skirt. I mean, it works on any length of skirt. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's fashion hacks and tips segment, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Welcome back to the Everything Talk Show. Now we are going to take you around the town to a place called Providence Canyon in Lumpkin, Georgia, which is about two and a half hours or so southwest of Atlanta, Georgia. We went there, I guess it's been a couple of years since we went. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, we visited there, and it's and it's all things magnificent. Do you remember the trip? Yeah, I remember. It was beautiful. I mean, it was like, I mean, I had no idea that there was a canyon right here in Georgia. Yeah, they actually call it the Little Grand Canyon, and so you get to see 
um, almost, well, it's like a little version of the Grand Canyon. And so it was fascinating, uh, the colors and the various rock features and, yeah. and whatnot, um, and trails and um, woods and, you know, just um, just everything. So you um, it's a must-see uh, if you ever come to visit Georgia. So please turn your attention to Providence Canyon in Lumpkin, Georgia. Providence Canyon State Park is a Georgia state park located in Lumpkin, Georgia, approximately two and a half hours southwest of Atlanta. The park contains Providence Canyon, which is sometimes called Georgia's Little Grand Canyon. It is considered one of the seven natural wonders of Georgia. Georgia's Little Grand Canyon is a sobering reminder to the power of man's influence on the land. Because of poor farming practices during the 1800s, enormous gullies as deep as 150 feet developed. Yet today, they make some of the prettiest photographs within the state. The canyon soils pink, orange, red, and purple hues make a beautiful natural painting. The canyon is home to a variety of deciduous and evergreen trees, as well as plants and flowers that fill its 1,003 acres. Visitors can enjoy views of the canyon from the rim trail taking care to stay behind fences and off the fragile canyon edge. Hikers who explore the deepest canyons will usually find a thin layer of water along the trail, indication of the water table below. Guests who hike the canyons four and five may want to join the Canyon Climbers Club. Backpackers are allowed to stay overnight along the backcountry trail, but must be mindful to follow the rules for safety as they make their way through the mixed forest. If you're looking for an outdoor adventure that is second to none, come and explore Providence Canyon State Park. For more information about Providence Canyon State Park, visit www.gastateparks.org backslash Providence Canyon. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back soon. Welcome back to the Elevate Talk Show. And in today's uh, Meal of the Week segment, I'm going to be showing you how to make sausage stir fry with garlic butter herb biscuits. Yes, we actually had that for lunch today. That's the wonderful thing about having uh, a resident. Um, chef uh, in the house. We get to eat all of the things that she makes for the show. It's wonderful. And it was absolutely delicious. I've been doing keto, uh, well, uh, for the most part, but today I was non-keto. It was a cheat day. It was definitely a cheat day. She made these, these garlic buttered herb biscuits and they tasted like, you know, those well, red lobster biscuits. They were like bootleg red lobster biscuits. Yeah. They were really good. Uh, so you absolutely want to make this meal. So please turn your attention to Adriana's stir-fry, sausage stir-fry with buttery garlic herb biscuits. Okay, so we're going to start off with our biscuits and we're going to start with our dry ingredients. So right here I have four cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to pour in two tablespoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and one tablespoon of garlic powder. And I'm just going to mix all of those things together. And I'm also going to add in three tablespoons of oregano. So this is going to give us this nice um, herbal flavor. But if you don't like oregano, you could also use parsley. So I'm going to pour that in there. All right, so now we're going to add in our wet ingredients. So I have two sticks, so one cup of cubed chilled butter. I cut it up into cubes and I put it in the freezer. Now when you're making biscuits, it's very important to keep your butter cold until the very last minute. So I'm going to add this in. And I'm also going to add in two cups of cold buttermilk. So I'm just going to stir this together until the dough, it forms a nice dough. All right.
great. So our biscuit dough is done. And now I'm going to transfer these the biscuit dough to a glass baking dish. So I'm just going to put a little flour on my hands. I'm just going to gather up a handful of dough. And I'm just going to place the biscuits in the dish. All right, so now that we've put the biscuits in our glass baking dish, I'm gonna stick these in a 450 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes, and then I'll be back to show you what the biscuits look like. All right, so let's move on to our sausage stir fry. So I've got some vegetables here. I have some yellow squash. I have some green bell peppers and some white onions. But if you have different vegetables that you prefer to use, you can do that. It's, this is one of those flexible recipes that you can adjust to your palate. So I'm just gonna put the vegetables in here. And I'm just gonna stir these around. And so they're all nice and coated in the melted butter. And I'm going to add in some spices. I'm going to add in one and a half teaspoons of black pepper, a tablespoon of chili powder, and two teaspoons of salt. And I'm just going to stir this around until all of these spices are nice and mixed in with the vegetables. So next, I'm going to add in the sausage. I have um, six um, cooked Italian sausage links that I sliced up. You can use fresh sausage like I did, or you can also use smoked sausage. So I'm just going to add that in, and I'm going to stir that around, and I'm going to let this cook for about five or six minutes until the vegetables are nice and soft. Okay, so our food is ready and it looks very delicious. I'm just gonna plate this up so that you can see how good this looks. So I'm just gonna put some of our sausage stir fry on here, on the plate. Let's see. Let's see. Some more squash on there so that we have a little color. Great. Gonna get a little bit more. There we go. And now I'm gonna take a couple of our biscuits here and just put that on. And it looks very delicious. I'm gonna give you a close up shot so that you can see how good this looks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's Meal of the Week segment, and I can't wait to see you again next time. over but before we go we've got a couple of things that we'd like to share with you first of all we've noticed that a lot of you or viewers that are watching our show every week are um are watching us but not subscribing yes. so we really need you to hit that subscribe button Absolutely. we don't want to have to come after you don't make us come get you you know what don't don't make us do it so subscribe to the show secondly we want to remind everybody that we put out a new show uh each week Sunday evenings, and so on. Uh, and you can see us in a variety of ways. You can watch us via YouTube, or you can go to Comcast Channel 25 if you live in DeKalb County, Georgia, and watch us uh, on that channel at 7 p.m. Sunday evenings. Um, and or you can go to www.decab25.com and live stream the Elevate Talk Show there on Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. So lots of ways to be to see the Elevate Talk Show, right? Yes. Any last words? Well, thank you for watching our show. It wouldn't be a show without nope. our viewers. That's right. And we can't wait to see you again next week. That's right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time on the Elevate Talk Show. Bye now. Bye.